Here we go. This is the Autism Spectrum Quotient Test. The Autism Spectrum Quotient Test, abbreviated to AQ, is a diagnostic questionnaire designed to measure the expression of autism spectrum traits in an individual by his or her own subjective assessment. Self-assessment. Anyway, listen, the, why am I doing this today? So, I figure that a lot of autistic people go through this test, and they'll go through it for one of two reasons that I can figure out. The first one is, and maybe you're, maybe you're like me, where you have limited access to healthcare professionals. Maybe you're like me, you haven't had healthcare, health insurance for most of your adult life, and so you use this as a way to compensate for that lack of healthcare access. But... Then there's the other reason, and I bet you this is much more prevalent, which is along the lines of, if you're autistic, and you came to that, that point where you're like, hmm, I think I might be autistic, and then you go on a seven-hour uninterrupted research binge about what autism's all about, because let's get real, you weren't going to wait the week and a half to just go see some professional. And so you sought out this test. And so we're going to take it. Um, I'm going to comment on it. What are what? Because in general, I think this is a very good test, um, especially for something. It was first published in two thousand one. Autism research has come a long way in the past twelve to fifteen years. So you got to give credit to not Sasha Baron Cohen here and his colleagues at the Cambridge Autism Research Center for coming up with a pretty good test before autism research really exploded in a positive way. Uh, please comment if you have any criticisms. Please comment if you have any questions, you know, clarification or what have you. And I'm basically just going to live comment what I think about this test. Okay. First question. I guess these are statements. It's, it's a definitely agree to definitely disagree. It's like one of those political polls that you get. I prefer to do things with others rather than on my own. All right. First instant reaction. Like, I remember... Hearing, when I first heard about this test, I was told, what you want to do is you want to make snap judgments. What is the first thing that comes to mind? And for me, the first thing that comes to mind, I would rather do things with others than on my own. Well, I think about, hey, listen, for this channel, I think it'd be more fun if I had one buddy to do it with me all the time. I think it's fun the fact that, I mean, I'm looking in the comments section, I'm recon recognizing some names that I know, you know, that, that makes me feel good. I think about the group projects that I've had throughout the course of my life, and I much prefer to be part of a team. But, those are all biased. Like, all, everything I just mentioned is like selection bias problems, where if I'm part of a team, it's probably because I helped select that group, so of course I'm going to be more game on working with them. But if I'm working in just a random group, like if you're in class or if you're at work and you're just like assigned a group, hell no, I would way rather work on my own. And that's because... I have my own vision on how something should be done. And I don't want to deviate from that. So while my instant reaction would be somewhere between slightly agree and definitely agree, I got to get real. I got to get like the whole totality of group work versus working on my own. And I have to go slightly disagree. All that for just a slightly disagree. Okay, number two. I prefer to do things the same way over and over and over again. This is another way where, on a conscious level, I try to vary up things because I feel like if you live in a routine, like overly routine, you're going to wind up feeling like one day runs into the next and then your life will go by faster. So that's on the conscious level. But if I'm like really self-aware about it, yeah, yeah, I prefer to do the same thing over and over and over again. Even the way that I like, walk up the stairs to my apartment, I walk up the stairs the exact same way. I think it's just ingrained on a subconscious level. You you know it. The cringe apocalypse. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, you know what? I agree, cheesecake in a bottle. Do thing is super vague. Whatever. That, that's that's one of the problems with these tests is that they, they can be very vague. Anyway, number three. If I try to imagine something, I find it very easy to create a picture in my mind. I mean, if it's like cooking, I'm pretty good at that. If I'm trying to execute a dish, I'm trying to like, I'm going to make curry and it winds up the way that I have it. I, I don't have much to comment. I'll slightly agree with this. Number four, I frequently get so strongly absorbed in one thing that I lose sight of other things. Fuck yeah. 
fuck yeah. This is like autism 10 out of 10 right here. I frequently get so strongly absorbed in one thing that I lose sight of other things. Um, yeah, I mean, I mentioned earlier the, the seven-hour research binge on uh, on what autism is all about. Yep, yep. That's a, that's a 100% yep. I often notice small sounds when others do not. Okay, here's, here's a weird thing about autism. Are you ready? So, my hearing kind of sucks. And yet, when you get to those, like, higher frequency noises, noises you might describe as sharp, so all of a sudden, like, my sensitivity ramps up really hard. And this... This can include, for some reason, I don't know why, I, I want to answer yes on this because because despite the fact that I have like a base level of bad hearing, the autism absolutely accentuates it. We'll go, oh man, what do we want to go on this? Slight agree or slightly? Or definitely agree? All right, I want to see your comments. People are weird. Oh, same thing, feel good, feel good. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with strongly agree. We're, we're having no weak opinions. Troy Mitchell, I can't make, quote, pictures, like, artistically, but everything else is pretty vivid. Dude, I'm, I'm 100% with you on that one. I do not have much artistic impulse from... Eh, artistic. Sounds so close, doesn't it? Uh, not much artistic impulse, but more of, like, a real-world practical application. I feel like I've got a good, a good vision to real life. I don't know how to end this sentence. I usually num notice car number plates is this this is meant this is made by british people or similar strings of information yeah do i have to explain this do i have to explain how this is an autism characteristic yes this is just objectively true other people frequently tell me that i've said that what i've said is impolite even though i think it is polite all right this is this is a disconnection with tone i have tone problems all the time however if you take this question too literally which you know if you take it too literally, like people don't just tell me that I'm being rude. They'll give me signs that maybe I don't notice in the moment, but I will 100% notice later. But it's because like I'm really abrasive and and this is one of the this is one of the biases of these tests. I'm I'm just going to get into it right now. I was going to save it for for later on, but this kind of assumes that you're more on the introverted end of the spectrum and that is of course, the autism stereotype that we're all introverted wallflower people, but there are there are extroverted autistic people. And unfortunately, that stereotype is problematic because there are people like me who, you know, you take that Myers-Briggs test. What's the other one? The, the real one, the big five factor personality. That's the, like the real scientific one. And I'll get like 90 percent on the extroversion. And because this kind of stereotypes autistic people as being introverted and, and that's the autism stereotype in general. Um, I'm doing a terrible job of describing this. The point I'm getting to is, is this, I had a friend tell me, and he's, he was diagnosed when he was about 10 years old, that he would have never considered that I was autistic because I'm extroverted. And I've had political activist friends who I told, and, uh, and they looked at me like, like what? Because I don't, I don't know, because I'm extroverted. So other people frequently tell me that I've what I've said is impolite. They gesture it. I like it comes through. Communication differences cannot <laughs> cannot shield me from not noticing. When I'm reading a story, I can't easily imagine what the character I can e We're getting into my dyslexia right now. I can easily imagine what the characters might look like. No. Not at all. This is probably one of the reasons why I don't read a ton of fiction. The only fiction book I really read is um, is Lord of the Rings. And the only reason I feel like I can vision like those characters is because I've seen the movies. Typically speaking, when I'm reading a story or I'm hearing it through an audiobook, I actually don't imagine a full scene. I imagine the specific thing. So I'm, I'm thinking of this chapter in Lord of the Rings where they meet uh, Aragorn for the first time and you know they described his hair as being flecked with gray I don't see the full face all I ever see is the hair that's being flecked with gray Ooh, oh yeah the noise of electricity is terrible for me I always use candles at night it's so comfortable and comforting and peaceful 100% definitely comforting and peaceful okay 
I, you know, uh, Buttercup draws. I really hope that the the sound, the sound of my poor laptop that is that is screaming at how much I'm stressing it is not bothering you. Okay, number nine. I'm fascinated with dates. This is, uh, if anyone's seen my first video, I talk about part of the reason why I think I like baseball is all the all the numbers, and my, I'm starting to realize now that my main love of baseball is through the history, and so much of that is dates, is date oriented, and you can. You can graph that onto Lord of the Rings. I love the dates in Lord of the Rings, too. Number 10. In a social group, I can easily keep track of several different people's conversations. This is something that is not a great skill to have. This this is one of those that marks you as a weirdo 100%. Because, oh man, I just I have this one particular vision of, of being in class and people having a conversation behind me. And then I turn around to talk with them. And they're like... As if it was rude for me to listen to them and then interject. This is this is that's like multiple autism traits right there, where um, where you don't know when to talk in a social group. I can easily keep track of several different people's conversations. I don't want to say it's easy, but it happens naturally. <laughs> we have a history major in chat. Dates make sense. Okay, well you know what? History is more than just dates. I do the multiple conversations thing constantly. Yes, it, the, you know they don't. I don't think they they talk about this in the uh, in this in this test. Maybe hey, maybe we'll get to it. There's like 50 questions, but the multiple conversations thing. I think that that's a tangential conversation thing, which again I don't think that they they cover in this. But that's that's a big thing. Is is feeling like you're contributing to the conversation with something that you know in your heart is is connected to what everyone else is saying but but nobody gets why i find social situations easy Oof. this is this is another assuming you're an introvert but not wholly because even i as a super extrovert person when i'm in a new social situation where for example i don't know everyone that's there and i mean everyone that's there i find it pretty nerve-wracking where uh uh-oh are we having technical difficulties oh i need to scroll the test up okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry, everyone, for not getting that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, technical assistant. <laughs> Slash. But you fired me. But I fired you. <laughs> I banished you to the other room. Okay. Um, the social situation's easy. So, um, man, this it would be so much more difficult to be, like, autistic and introverted, I feel like. I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty pretty good at being extroverted and autistic. That's a random tangential thing. Okay, I find social situations easy. I find them exceptionally difficult unless I have that one friend that I can like cling on to. They're like my safety blanket friend that I can cling on to and follow. Um, so I, I, the fact that it takes that for me to feel comfortable in a new social situation, and it's not like oh my god, I'm so uncomfortable, I need to leave right now at this moment. It's more of that nervous excitement, I have no idea what to do. I find social situations easy. Deep down, I, as much as I, as much as I, like my ego wants to come through and say slightly disagree, it's about being honest, all right? I tend to notice details that others do not. This is my life. This is, this is my entire existence. I don't have to explain further. This is my entire existence. If you're autistic, you know. I'd rather go to a library than a party. I mean, if the party has exclusively people that I like and that I know that I'm familiar with, party 100%. But I'd much rather go to a quiet space than like a random party with a bunch of normal people. I was dragged to a bunch of those like boomer house parties when I was a kid because, I don't know, my dad dragged me to them. It wasn't my fault. And they were just just miserable um I'll, I'll go slight agree on the on the rather than right, the library over the party i find making up stories easy no no i find making up stuff in general kind of difficult you know what i'm really good at and i wonder if other autistic people will identify with this please hit me up in the chat if you agree with this is if there's a foundation I can really build on top of that. I think the best example would be cooking. So I often have that base recipe and then I build on top of it given what I like to do. And, uh, but I'm not good at just coming up with something 100%. I'm really good at expanding on a foundation. 
Social situations, not hard, but I'm constantly overthinking every interaction and observing until I figure out enough people to feel comfortable. You know what, Trent Mitchell, you're more socially competent than I am. I guess that's what we have to draw from that. Number 15. Oh my God, we're only on 15. I find myself drawn more strongly to people than to things. Hmm. I mean, I, I love trains. I really love trains. I did trains earlier today. I was running model trains. It was a great... It was, I ran my New Haven i5. It was beautiful. Okay. When I edit this, I'll have the New Haven i5 pop up. Okay. I find myself more strongly drawn to people than to things. You know, as much as I love trains, as much as I love Lord of the Rings, and as much as I don't like most people because I find them, like, boring and, like... It's like their brains didn't grow beyond high school. I... I feel like if I lost all my things in the world, it would be less devastating to me than losing the close people in my life. So I would say I, I'm going to lean towards people like the, the strongest loves I've had are not for trains. They're not for baseball. They're not for the Lord of the Rings. They're not for Avatar, the last airbender. It's, it's the important relationships I've had in my life with my friends, with my mother, with, with romantic relationships I've had. So I, I have to go with, with people. And I, you know what? I, let me criticize the test here. Autistic people aren't necessarily drawn away from people just because we hate people. Part of it's just because we've been alienated, right? Like, other people have, have kind of earned it. And, uh, you know, I had another criticism, and now I just lost it because I'm live streaming. Live streaming and I'm nervous. Um, I'm, all right. <laughs> Whatever. It's gone. Maybe it'll come back. If it's that interesting, it'll come back. Number 16, I tend to have very strong interests. Very should be all capitalized, which I get upset about if I can't pursue. This really should be like the first question. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I I yeah. Does anyone want to comment on this? <laughs> I'm way better at the expanding on the foundation than making something up. All right, cool. Somebody else is like me. I enjoy social chit chat. Oh my god, I love social chit chat. Oh my god, don't you love meaningless empty conversations that you'll forget about in 10 minutes don't you just love those we got to definitely disagree <laughs> i this is okay this is connected to the the inability to know when somebody doesn't want to hear it you know the i think there's a question later on like i'm good at telling whether people are interested in what i have to say this is totally connected to the, the i enjoy social chit chat i cannot imagine not wanting to have intellectual conversations. And because of that bias, I not only don't care about gossip, I not only don't care about meaningless pop culture nonsense, but I can't help but talk about politics. Let's get real. I'm just going to I'm just going to be straight up. It's politics. And um yeah. We'll just end it right there. <laughs> hey guys, how's the weather? Anyone like the weather like, right? To what extent is social chit-chat neurotypical people? trying to avoid awkward silence i there maybe there should be a question here that's if you're autistic you are more accepting towards awkward silence 18 when i talk it isn't always easy for others to get a word in edgewise yep if you know me uh, uh, yeah that's a strongly agree this is both not knowing when it's your turn to talk but uh, it's also like info dumping when you've got something you're really passionate about and you want to express every little detail about it um, but I also feel like it's, it's there, like, you know how autistic people have trouble with scheduling, you know, like we have trouble with gear shifting. And so I, I feel sometimes when I'm talking, like I have this stream of, of thoughts of like, I'm leading to this point, I'm leading to this idea that I'm talking and like, I have to finish it or I'm going to have my head explode. I am fascinated by numbers. I already discussed baseball. Yes. Strongly agree. I'm also fortunately very gifted with math. Have I exemplified my struggle to let people talk more by my participation in this chat yet? Trent Mitchell, you're all good. <laughs> hey, you know what? In a chat, you can't interrupt anyone. It's something that, you know, I'm definitely working on. When I'm reading a story, I find it difficult to work out the character's intentions. This is what we were talking about earlier. Strongly disagree. Ooh, wait, when I'm, I find it difficult. Oh, excuse me. I find it difficult. Ooh, okay. I'm going to go slightly agree. Here's why I'm going to go slightly agree. Um, and I'm, I'm going to try to be creative on this one. 
try to work out the character's intentions. Would it be a dick move of me to say that, like, when I'm reading academic papers, I try to look at the bias of the author? Is that cheating? Is that or is that tangential? My tangential conversationing this this uh, this number twenty here. I find it difficult to work out the character's intentions. I certainly do the first time round reading, but if I'm reading Lord of the Rings for the eighth time not an exaggeration, then I, I find it very easy. But I think that that's because of the repetition and I'm familiar with the story already. <sighs> Do I have to go strong agree on that? Do I have to go strong agree on that? We'll stick with slightly agree. I don't particularly enjoy reading fiction. Yeah, I do have to go slightly agree. Lord of the Rings keeps this from being uh, strongly agree. I keep saying strongly, definitely agree, whatever. But uh, we're going to go slightly agree. Trim Mitchell challenge accepted. I imagine you're going to try to interrupt people in the chat, which would be very impressive. You'd have to, like, break the chat. Which, again, you'd probably, like, earn a lot of money doing that. Like, if you were able to, like, code that. Don't forget to like the stream, everyone. The algorithm god likes that. It's true. Everyone like the stream. Everyone like... We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Hey, that way I can start making money. I find... And then I won't have to wear, like... Eventually, we're going to have to say goodbye to this very expensive canvas, which is not a green screen. I find it hard to make new friends. Hmm. I feel like my extroversion really mitigates this. I find it hard to make new friends. I actually find it more nerve-wracking to ask a potential friend to hang out than I do to ask someone out on a date. Is that weird? I find it hard to make new friends. I do find it kind of difficult. I don't find it super difficult, but I think part of that is because I'm naturally drawn towards doing things in groups that have a, a common interest. So the best example would be political activism. So because I'm drawn to be politically active, I'm able to be around people who have very similar views on the world from me. And that's, you know, it's like if you're into board games and you go join a board game group. Kind of, kind of a similar thing. So it's like, it's not easy. So I do have to put a slightly agree. But it, I don't feel like it's impossible. And I, I find it kind of easy to strike up conversation. Again, relative to what my image of what it, uh, the stereotypical autistic person is. I hope that that makes it a, this stream a little bit more interesting, you know. Because the fact that I'm like a weirdo extrovert. Hopefully it makes things a little different. 23. I notice patterns in things all the time. The pattern recognition is one of the defining aspects of autism for me. It It's behavior. It's the way that a person looks. You know, if, I think there's a question later. Like, if there's a... Oh, here it is. Uh, here it is. 30. I don't usually notice some small change in a situation or a person's appearance. Like, this and the patterns, for me, these are very much connected. Um, because there's a pattern in a way someone looks. And if they, for example, change their hairstyle they like you know if it was me and like i cut it halfway like i would very easily notice that um and that's that's pattern recognition right there it almost goes too far it can become a little frustrating like i uh, uh I, th I think about like f you know arguments or fights i've had where because i notice all the patterns it, i don't know i don't want to go down that tangent all right 24 i'd rather go to the theater than to a museum now nah, in my life Throughout the course of my life, I have been much more uh, of a movie watcher than I would be a museum person. I'd rather go to the theater. But it's only slightly. It does not upset me if my daily routine is disturbed. Are you fucking kidding me? Of course it disturbs me. <laughs> I like that the word disturbed is in there, because that's an accurate way of describing it. could also be argued that a person with autism has a hard time making new friends because the potential friend thinks they're weird. You know what? I can't believe I didn't think about it from the other person's perspective. We're, we're going back to the, where's the friends? Here we are. I find it hard to make new friends. Yeah, so listen, like, there's a lot of people. I can't, thank, thank you, Reckless Creature, for pointing this out. Because um, I was thinking about it from the, the I'm trying to go out myself. I'm trying to be... Um, to, to introduce myself to new people and to make connections. But yeah, you're totally right. Most people just, 
they just know they don't even have to know that you're autistic they just can just tell that something's off you're not you're not one of the conforming brain people yeah that can definitely make it harder to make new friends i i know that i've been the person that uh that that cringe worthingly um cringe worthily cringingly uh tried to be part of a friend group that did not want me there do we have to change this i, I find making new friends hard i think maybe we have to change this Thank you, Reckless Creature, for nuance. Do we have to go over 25? Before we go on to 26, do we have to go over 25? One thing in the morning going wrong, especially when I'm when I'm feeling rough. We're going to go into this a little bit. When I'm in like a rougher patch and one little thing disturbs my schedule or, or perhaps better put, like my vision for the day. One thing disturbing me completely derails me, to use a train terminology. And I think it, it goes back to it's it's very difficult to gear shift. And that's because, and I talked about this in my last video, where the vision of what my day is going to be is so strong that it becomes hard to anticipate veering off from that. It's almost as if there's blinders and you're on the train tracks and there's only one path. Okay, now we can move on to 26. It's worth expanding upon. Well, I'm glad I expanded upon it. 26. I frequently find that I don't know how to keep conversation going. This, for me, falls into the introvert bias. I have no problem, no problem whatsoever, keeping conversation going. I might have a problem keeping conversation interesting for the other person, because I might be I might be info dumping hard on one of my special interests, but I have zero problem keeping conversation going. In fact, when it comes to conversation, the more difficult thing for me is not interrupting people. It's one of my biggest struggles. If I'm at work or something and my boss asks me to do something else, it screws me up bad. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm right there with you. I think that that's why, and we're, we're back on 25, whatever, we're going back and forth. Um, I think that that's why, like, I've done gig work. I did, um, I did, I think it was Instacart was what it was called, where, you know, the, the app pops up and I'm sure Uber and Lyft will work the same way where they're like, hey, hey, you've got, you've got an assignment and you've got to go to this place right now. And it's really quick. And it's like, oh, uh, 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 cannot adjust. It was horribly stressful. If you're autistic and you're watching this and you're in a gig economy job, you have my utmost empathy. I really hope you're able to get out of that job because they are so stressful. Has anyone else had that problem with the gig work? I can't be alone in that. Find it easy to read between the lines when someone is talking to me. Okay. The wording on this question, I keep saying question, statement. The wording on this statement is very important. When someone is talking to me, this is a present tense thing. If this was, I find it easy to read between the lines when I'm reflecting later on the conversation I had a few hours ago, it would be a strong agree. I'm pretty good at, at analyzing people, particularly like their motivations. Um, it was something I had to do a lot when I was a kid. Develop that skill. But because this is an in-the-moment thing, someone is talking to me, I'm terrible in the moment. Absolutely terrible in the moment. <laughs> I feel like when I'm in the... Okay, in the moment, right? I think that most people, they like live in the moment. But me... No, I, I have this like as if it were a book, right? You know, there's the narrator, like there's the main character in a third person limited perspective where the, the main character is also kind of like the narrator. That's kind of how I feel where I'm like half in the moment and I'm half um, my higher self and I'm like looking down from an alien perspective. Had to get the branding in there. Okay, 28. I usually concentrate more on the whole picture rather than the small details. No, I'm small details all the way. Small details all the way. I, in fact, I remember being as a kid looking at, at large images and only being able to see like one image. The best example of this is Age of Empires where they have like the little character, right? Where would be like, this is the armored swordsman advanced elite person. And there'd be an image of that. And I had a very difficult time making out the whole image because I'd be looking at, for example, their silly hat. 11 in chat, only two likes. Come on. <laughs> Consensually smash that like button. Feel the AI god rhythm. <laughs> Thank you, Buttercup Draws. Buttercup Draws, you know what? You leave a lot of nice comments that make me feel good about existing in this world. I am not very good at remembering phone numbers. The okay, when was this made? 2001. Already outdated. 
remembering phone numbers. Are you serious? Oh my God. Uh, even still, I remember my, my phone number from when I was five. I am not very good at remembering phone numbers. Man, we're on a strongly disagree streak here, which is good. I like to have strong opinions. Refresh, there's more likes. Well, you know, actually, I should re uh, refresh mine because it actually has zero likes on the iPad that I'm watching. Okay, oops. All right, number 30. I don't usually notice small changes in a situation or a person's appearance. Nope, I notice it very easily. This is This goes right back to the details thing. Where it's like I can't see the, the the full person. I just like see all the little details that are different about them. Oh, Woodshed Theory. Hey, Woodshed Theory. Woodshed Theory makes good autism videos. Glad to see you on the live stream. Number 31. I know how to tell if someone is listening to me. Okay. God, the dyslexia. All right. I know how to tell if someone listening to me is getting bored. Are we, are we supposed to have this streak? Did I misread something? Man, I did, we're really going for this streak, aren't we? I'm, I'm displaying right now that I'm recognizing patterns. I know how to tell if someone listening to me is getting bored. I feel like I'm terrible at measuring the person, right? Like the emotional intelligence in the moment of, is this person showing signs of boredom? I think that what I'm good at is when I know someone well enough, I've recognized all their patterns. And I'm like, okay, this person has not seen Avatar The Last Airbender, probably does not want to hear me talk about how Zuko alone is an Afghanistan and Iraq war allegory. But, <laughs> I'm not very good at, uh, at determining it in the moment, based on like an emotional intelligence thing. It's more of an intellectual like pattern recognition thing. Not noticing the boredom can get so bad, it develops insecurity. One is, uh, one is getting bored when they're not. That is, that is a big thing, yes. Um... I guarantee you, Trent Mitchell, that that is a very common autistic experience. I find it easy to do more than one thing at once. All right, this is one of those where if I was to instant, like, what's my instant reaction? I'm like, yeah, man, when I'm cooking, I can boil the water, I can make the, the rice, and I can make the salmon curry all at once. And then I think outside of cooking... And the answer is no. <laughs> Multitasking is not easy. I like to hyper-focus on one thing for a long time. We stand Uncle Iroh in this chat. You're goddamn right, Uncle Iroh. Beautiful wisdom from him. It's kind of funny how... Um, we're just going to Uncle Iroh tangent right here, because Uncle Iroh is my favorite character. Um, Uncle Iroh is like a war criminal. It's amazing how um, if you were to like take his whole life, given, you know, that I'm a lefty, given that I'm anti-imperialist. Like, his early life where he's a war criminal would be irredeemable, but because we catch up with him as this enlightened sage figure, he's the most lovable Gandalf kind of figure. When I talk on the phone, I'm not sure when it's my time to speak. Well, you know what? The only way I feel like I could really determine this is by how much I interrupt. So I'll have to go slightly agree. I personally think that I lack the in-the-moment self-awareness to even know that I don't know when to talk on the phone. I enjoy doing things spontaneously. You know, I enjoy doing things spontaneously, but only when I'm expecting them. Uh, that's a Plinket Review reference. I enjoy doing things spontaneously. Uh, I really wish I was better at being spontaneous. Uh, I'm trying to think, because there have been times where you know somebody uh somebody had like a surprise and it was really nice and and i'd love to i'd love to say that i am always able to plow through the difficulty that is gear shifting but for the most part doing things spontaneously not my jam um <laughs> given given some of the names that are in this chat i think about in uh like high school and college where where a couple of my buddies would just show up randomly at my house at like you know 10 30 and expect to hang out and there was i I'm, I'm so sorry there was always this hill i had to overcome that we had to overcome where uh, i was being a pain in the ass and grumpy because i, I expected to be inside all night now now i'm now i'm outside hanging with my friends and having fun <clears throat> okay magneto was just a bender 100 metal bending 
Number 35. I am often the last to understand the point of a joke. I, can I flip this and say, I often make jokes that nobody else gets unless they're autistic or friends of mine. I am often. Oof. Often is a little too much. We have to go slightly agree. We can't go full on with this one. 36. I find it easy to work out what someone is thinking or feeling just by looking at their face. Okay. This is kind of complicated because if it's somebody that I don't know, I'm pretty bad at it. If it's somebody that I do know and like I know really well, I feel like I am able to do this really well. Like I, th I think about, um, I had this relationship in college where I was able to like express what we were both feeling, but she didn't talk at all during that. And, and so that makes me want to say, well, yeah, I'm good at that. But the only reason I feel like I was able to do that is because I recognized the patterns. If we get back to the patterns, the patterns of a particular person's behavior. I'm, I'm just terrible at it when it comes to a normal interaction with a person I've not really been around. So I find it easy. I'm not going to totally throw myself under the bus. We'll go slightly. We'll go slightly disagree. Statement should specify hard slash soft facial expression slash patterns. Yeah, that that would be a way to improve this. I, but I don't know though. We you could argue that um, <laughs> that making it more complicated would just make uh, would just make the sparks fly out of people's brains while taking the test more. Thirty seven. If there's an interruption, I can switch back to what I was doing very quickly. I think I have adequately covered how terrible I am at gear shifting. I can switch back to what I was doing very quickly. Yeah, right. Can you imagine being that kind of person? If you are that kind of person, you are like a magical being in my view. I'm good at social chit chat. They really asked this question twice. We already went through this. I enjoy social chit chat. Boy, they really wanted to hammer home the uh They really wanted to hammer home the the not caring about meaningless uh meaningless chit chat. Uh no, I'm not good at this. You know what I would love is, we're going to get to 39 in just a sec. You, you know what would be cool is, I don't know how to ask this. I don't know how this would be stated, but um, I, something related to tangential conversation and thinking is that if somebody isn't super precise with how they're speaking, I can interpret the ambiguities in what they're saying in multiple different ways. And I think that that leads to a lot of social confusion. Um, though that does fall under the, like the communication differences bucket. Remember the last video? Um, I would like to see that kind of question asked. Okay. 39. People often tell me that I keep going on and on about the same thing that you could have just said politics test. Yes. Th yes, this happens. Info dump plus, uh, not knowing when people don't want to hear it. When I was young, I used to enjoy playing games involving pretending with other children. Pfft, nah, dude. Listen, the other kids, they didn't know how to pretend very good. Okay, they they had that like their way of pretending. It just wasn't right. They weren't very good at it. My way was way better, and they didn't just do it my way, which I think is a problem. If some oops, just hit the mic. If someone can't interpret the kind of angry face of someone who's about to commit impassioned manslaughter versus if someone is uncomfortable because you farted, that's a huge difference. You know what? Sure. Sure. You get two points if you can't understand the, uh, the, the anger of, uh, <laughs> I can't even finish it without laughing. I collect information about categories of things. For example, types of cars, birds, trains. I love how they mention trains. A necessity. Or plants. All right. Oops, I didn't intend to do that. All right. We, we need to do this. And then we're going to go over here. And we're going to open this document. And I'm going to show you. The answer to this question lies within this document. That will take way too much time to open. Come on, Microsoft Word. Come on. Come on, Microsoft Word. How big of a program is Microsoft Word? My computer fan just went <laughs> crazy. All right, this, this document, this is the answer to the to number, what is it? Number 41. This is the answer. This is my documentation of every train that I own. All right? You see these categories? See these categories? We got, we, this is just American stuff. All right? We got, we got locomotives. We got freight cars. We've got 
what road name they are. We've got what the dates are on the car. Every car, every freight car that is good quality will have a date on it. Potentially even a date when it was repaired, like this nice flat car that I've got. Does this answer the question? I think that that adequately answers the strong agree. So now, see, if I was professional, I would have had that, that document already lined up before I started the stream. But I'm not. 42. I find it difficult to imagine what it would be like to be someone else. Okay. I find it very easy to put myself into somebody else's situation, into somebody else's circumstances, and project what I would do given their situation. However, this is what it would like to be somebody else. What it would like to be them with their experiences and their psychology. I have a very difficult time, for example, understanding um, understanding depression, like clinical depression. Absolutely terrible at it. I, I am that annoying meme that says, well, why don't you just, you just got to eat healthy and go take a walk outside. And um, yeah, that's not very helpful now, is it? So what it would like to be someone else. I find it difficult to imagine. Yeah. I'm going to put slightly agree because I, I, I did add that nuance of I am able to project myself into somebody else's situation. I like to carefully plan any activities I participate in. Absolutely. This is this is the opposite of the spontaneous question. <laughs> trains. That's right, Tim Travis. Trains. I like trains. I, I like trains should be a statement on this. That should get you one autism point. I really like to have a plan going in because I don't like ambiguity. Ambiguity is stress. I enjoy social occasions. You know what? If they're carefully planned, if they're carefully planned and they're with people that I like, I really enjoy social occasions. However, if I take the totality of social occasions I've ever been involved in, whether they be school, family, work, I don't know, man. Most people are kind of like, they're, they're kind of like normal and they like don't vibe with my weirdness. I, uh, it's so hard because if it, if I take the selection of like ones that I had a say in in creating, then I love them. Chat, what do you think? Where where are we going with this? Do I weight the totality of all social occasions, or do I like more strongly weight the ones that that I've disproportionately been a part of? Because you know, if there's a social occasion like politics, I'm gonna enjoy it. You do have some capacity with caveats. I call it slightly yes. Okay, all right. You know, what? we'll go slightly yes. All right. I find it difficult to work out people's intentions. So this one does not have the, the wording that the previous one did. Like the when someone is talking here on 27. I find it difficult to work out people's intentions. If this is an in the moment thing, again, I'm probably not very good at it. Unless I really know the person, um, then in the moment I'm not very good. But if you give me like just a couple hours and then I start reflecting, then I'm excellent absolutely excellent at it this is one of the like few areas of emotional intelligence where i feel like i'm i ace i'm in that a tier of of emotional intelligence i think they mean like a birthday party oh this must be for social occasions i think they mean like a birthday party hmm hmm all right woodshed theory now you're making me reconsider 44 i think i might have to go slightly disagree social occasions the word occasions tripping me up right now is the word occasions tripping anyone else up i'll go we're, we're slightly disagreeing with this the people's intentions, I'm going to slightly agree because I, if this was like, are you able to reflect and figure out people's motivations? It would be like, there, they would need to be like another category. There'd need to be one over here that says, this is me 10 out of 10. But, but because of that in the moment factor, we're, we're going to go slightly agree. New situations make me anxious. You know what? All I have to do is reflect on uh, an hour ago. <laughs> yes. If if it's a new social situation, I'd say you ramp it up, despite the fact that I'm extroverted. New social situations make me anxious. I'm not that anxious of a person, too. But they are the, the new social situations really is one of the rare occasions that I get kind of stressed out. Maybe I'll go, I'll go strongly agree on this. Even political stuff. Like, I'll go to a political event at a new location I've never been to. Like, I, I know I'm going to know people there, but I'm not going with anyone. Eh. 
And that makes me anxious. We're going to go full on. We're going full on. 47. I enjoy meeting new people. I enjoy getting to know new people. I enjoy getting to know the core of someone. I do not enjoy meeting new people. See, meeting people is like the moment. The moment that you meet. I don't enjoy that. I enjoy the the we're an hour into knowing each other. And now we're getting to the real shit. I do not enjoy meeting new people. I don't know what to say. There's all these like weird social conventions that come with meeting new people. Like, are we still handshaking even after COVID? I thought handshaking was going to die. God damn it. It hasn't. For me, there needs to be a fifth category, which is it depends. Yeah, Buttercup Draws, you know, I think that the whole point of this test is they don't want you to be in that ambig ambiguous territory. They want you to go and just, just make a decision. Dude, you beat me uh, to it as I was typing it out. Getting to know, yes, yes. Getting to know people is way better. Because then you're like getting to their understanding. Like, who, who are they at their core? I am a good diplomat. I am a good diplomat. Hmm. I have friends that are better diplomats than I am. How do we want to take the word diplomat? Is this, I'm the third person being the arbiter of a situation? I'm, I feel like I'm pretty good at that. I feel like I can be pretty good at like removing myself from the situation and being like that third person alien perspective where I'm kind of able to see both sides. But there's this part of me that thinks that this is more geared towards am I able to be a diplomat for myself in the moment? Hmm. Actually, I still kind of... I'm a good dip. You know what? I, oh, I can't believe I didn't think of this automatically. I am terrible at compromising my vision. If I have a vision for how a project or an evening should go, I'm pretty terrible at veering off from that. Boy, now that I thought of that, now I think I have to go into the disagree area. Being a bad diplomat is why I hate Catan. <laughs> All right. I, if only I got that reference better. I, I, I am a good diplomat. Ugh. I Yeah, we're, we're going slight disagree. I am not very good at remembering people's date of birth. I feel like I am pretty good at that. I, I give happy birthdays to people. There's someone in chat. I know your birthday's uh, coming up not too sh not too far away, about a week from now. Happy birthday to that person. I'm not very good. At I'm not very good. No, I'm very good at it. I find it easy to play games with children that involve pretending. No, I'm terrible at this. I'm absolutely terrible at this. <laughs> absolutely terrible at this because I I don't know how to like how they're pretending. Because, like, if you're, you know, if you're playing games with a kid, you, like, you want it to be framed around how that kid pretends. And I'm just not good at that. Okay, so we're going to get into the scoring my answers. Happy birthday, stranger. Well, you know, I don't want to, like, shout out the person's name, okay? We wouldn't want them to be, like, named on my stream. That'd just be embarrassing. Okay, score my answers. 44 whole... Wow. Okay. Now, I wrote this down. What What does this mean? Okay. So the average score for like an average normal brain person is anywhere between 11 and 21. If you got between 26 and 30, 86% chance you're autistic. So if you're above 26, pretty good chance. If you're above 32, this is what the paper, like the, remember the paper, the, the, the Sasha Baron Cohen relative that wrote the paper that this comes from? This paper identified 32 and above as being the cutoff. 80% um, of autistic people scored at least 32. Um, and if you're above 38, 38 is another cutoff where if you hit that 38 mark, there was nobody that was neurotypical that scored 38 or above. That took me way too long to describe. Um, and only 2% of neurotypical people who take this test scored at least 32. I got to say, like, I'm surprised on this 44. I, I'm wondering if I misread a couple questions that that's bound to happen. I'll go back when I'm editing this, you know, clean it up, and I'll notice I probably misread a couple of these. Um, I've never gotten 44 on this. I've taken this test before, and I've gotten like 38, 40, 42, 39. It's kind of surprised me. I have all the autism. Are people congratulating me? Bad at compromising on my vision is something I agree with. Yes, that was a question from the other page, but yes. <laughs> 
Trent Mitchell, I cannot, all caps, cannot relate with children. I just treat them like tiny people. They just tend to love me for some reason. You know what? Good for you. <laughs> 44 autism points. They left out the trains question. It should be 60. Damn right. Um, I do want to give one caveat to this. Because women are perpetually underdiagnosed. And this test... Um, if you look at a chart, I saw this chart where it's like all men, how they scored on the test and all women. And it's like all women had like two less points. Even the neurotypical dudes scored higher on this. So there, there must be some sort of something, some sort of bias in this test that evidently the, uh, the people who do the diagnosing of autism have as well. Um, and I wonder if it relates to, uh, I wonder if it really, it has to relate to the social questions because women who are on the spectrum are are better at coping with like the communication differences and unfortunately part of that is masking but um because masking can be can be unhealthy but um i did want to make that note it is only a slight difference um but i wonder if oh here was the here was the connection i was making was i wonder if the questions i was complaining about where um they assume you're introverted if you're autistic and not extroverted i wonder if those are the kind of questions where um where, where women who take this test are coming off as less autistic. And I'm sorry to say less autistic, and it's not a zero to a hundred. Watch my other video. Okay. All right. Well, I think I won. I'm definitely autistic. I already knew this. Um, did I have anything else? I had other notes. Hold on. Oh, Asperger's from the inside. Uh, great channel for autism. He described the AQ test as follows. It's good at telling you if you... Uh, telling you if you are on the spectrum, but it's not great at telling you if you're neurotypical. And that's because a full 20% of autistic people who are diagnosed autistic scored below 32. So, okay. Yes, I agree with, uh, agree probably the social questions. Well, woodshed theory, you know, you, you would know better than me relating to the, to the gender bias within this test. Is it the gender norms push women to be more social? Tim Travis, that is my, that is my, that would be my guess. Yeah. The, uh, I'm very much in favor of the nurture over nature. Like I don't understand why like the DNA of women would make them like that. Like, I don't know. That just doesn't make any sense to me. It, it has to be some sort of like socialization thing. Um, and, and by the way, the, I want to note this too. Um, if you're, um, autistic, you're, I think it's seven times more likely to be non-binary or trans. Um, or perhaps I should better put it this way. You are seven times more likely to be out. You're seven times more likely to be aware. And, uh, and I wonder if that's just because autistic people don't really go towards social conventions. And so I think that we are more predisposed to just being full on real and not being in denial about, you know, our gender identity, for example. less autistic re <laughs> you know what we need to do because i would like to do this more i was i was i had that super nervous excitement going on but this was a lot of fun and i feel like i uh i feel like i word flowed better like i i compare this to when i'm doing the video essays and when i'm doing the video essays and i have like a script or notes or what have you i want to ace it i want to get it perfect and as a result i'll stop and start if i say something weird this got no problem with that whatsoever so i think i should do this more often i'm curious how old are you and uh how old when you were diagnosed um i'm 28 i am not diagnosed i have not had health care for most of my adult life i have known i was autistic this is a much more important answer to the question i have known i'm autistic kind of forever i've always recognized that i was different and that i was weird and that most people were not like me but it wasn't until about mid high school that I started to think, you know what, I might very well be on the spectrum. However, because of certain stereotypes, like autistic people are are introverted, autistic people um, have some sort of intellectual problem. You know, I didn't learn until just a couple years ago that only one in six autistic people actually have an intellectual impairment, and it's probably even less than that because there are a ton of underdiagnosed un undiagnosed people. So, um, you know, these stereotypes kept me from really looking into it. And of course, the lack of access to health care, that, that was a big thing. But I always had it in my mind, well, you know, I'm lucky because I'm, I'm able to, to socialize a little bit better. I'm, I'm able to, to cope better. I'm able to have enough executive functioning to where I can 
be good at school. And these things kept me from coming to a better understanding about autism, and it hurt me. And I wonder how much more growth I would have had earlier in my 20s had I come to a better understanding of autism before the age of 26. It took me until age 26 to really look into it. And it was um, it was that, I guess, to self-discovery that really um, brought me into doing this channel. Um, I think it's I think it's what boosted me. Um, and even though I just planned on having this be a, a politics exclusive channel, we see how well that's gone. I too would like to hear how you uh, discovered your autism. Um, yeah, I mean, other than recognizing that I was just weird and different, um, I don't know, man, it's just kind of obvious. Like, don't people just treat you weird? Like, people just treat you like, like you're a little alien. I, 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 I call this alien perspective because I feel like I was born on another fucking planet. But what really kicked me in, um, to a greater understanding is discovering the Asperger's from the Inside Channel. I think the first, uh, the first video I ever watched from him was like 20 or 25 questions to ask if you're autistic and I'm watching it going, oh my God, it's me. And it was this kind of consciousness altering moment where I realized I have so underestimated this, so underestimated this part of me. They just treated me weird. Yep. Yep. You know, I, uh, another reason why I think that um, I didn't come to an autism understanding earlier was because I've always embraced being weird and uh, being the big ego man that I am. I always, uh, I took it in the other direction. Like they're treating me because I'm weird. <laughs> That's because they're boring and normal and stupid. <laughs> and you can see why I'm, I came off condescending quite a bit when I was a kid. No, stay. You are the chat's hostage. No. All right. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it up, everyone. Oops. We've gone back to trains. Okay. Let's go full screen all right thank you all for coming to my first live stream this, this really meant a lot to me this is going to be an experience that i that i always remember